Princess Leia, remember to forget everything that happened from now until the next time we meet. You must act as if we've never met each other or we've never heard of each other ever again to protect each of us from this series from ever happening. May the Force be with you. That's right, friends. It's your man Z here with Our Views Kill You, and I am here to go over the Obi-Wan Kenobi finale. And let's, I'm going to try to do this briefly because I'm not going to break everything down. If you got this far, if you watched this much, if you've seen it all the way, you're here to discuss just some of the, the goods, the bads, and the uglies. If you're interested, I have other rants here. Uh, there's another Obi-Wan Kenobi rant where I lose my mind and I discuss with you just how much uh, they've broken canon and all those other things. But don't just wait. You, you had to see it till the end, says the writers, because we fixed all of the broken canon, we promise, which they did <laughs> by making it. So let's just point out a couple things. Spoilers here. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to point out a couple things. You remember how the first time that Luke Skywalker ever sees the lightsaber, he goes, and he, he's sitting with Obi-Wan, he goes, what's that? Well, it's a lightsaber, so he can never have seen one. Don't worry, when Reva tries to murder him, he'll never see her because he randomly falls down a cliff and knocks himself out, and he'll never see a lightsaber. Excellent. Remember how I pointed out in my previous video, or one of my previous videos, that it broke canon because Leia had to act as if she never saw Obi-Wan Kenobi in her entire life? Don't worry, they retconned it so it would happen. Trust me, they did it. He, Obi-Wan literally says to her, you can never mention this ever again. Act as if none of this has ever happened. These are not the droids you are looking for. All of those things happen. Remember the part when <laughs> when Obi-Wan and uh, Darth Vader fight and they go, uh, you know, they act as he calls him master. He's still the master. Remember, they go back and say that because when they say the circle conversation, when Darth Vader says to Obi-Wan Kenobi, oh, when last we met, you were still the master and I was but the pupil. But now I am the master and the circle's complete. Remember that? They, they fixed it with the retconning. They did it with a couple of throwaway lines in a show that are is just absolutely redonkulous. For those of you who like the show, and, and don't get me wrong, I understand if some of you like it, I'm okay with that. I think, and I'll explain this again, there are two different types of Star Wars fans. There are Star Wars fans who enjoy the brand, who enjoy lightsabers and the mythic and the and the the like lightsaber fights and blasters and the the fights and the the fun the joy that comes with this and then there's star wars fans who are really into the lore and the canon who you know consider themselves like hardcore fans whatever people who can recite lines from the movie let's 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 start with those people all those people are absolutely furious with what they saw now there were some things i did like uh, Ewan McGregor, who uh, is a great Obi-Wan, but also an extremely boring character, uh, was pretty good. I liked him. I really enjoyed Anakin as much as I hated him in the prequel movies. I really thought he did a good job here. I think the guy's uh, uh, under... Well, I'm not going to say he's an underrated actor, but he can still act. And I really enjoyed the fight scene between Obi-Wan and Vader... I wanted to see him without his mask on, and I, I just thought there was some really cool stuff that he did there. You know, his his emoting. You know, remember the line where Obi Wan says, "Everyone's like Ob Obi Wan lies all the time because because he said, uh, you know, oh Darth Vader killed your father. Remember that? Oh well, guess what? They retcon that too because Anakin literally says it from his own mouth. I killed Anakin Star or <laughs> Anakin Skywalker." I actually, I murdered him. There's only Darth Vader. Okay, cool, cool. I mean, I enjoyed that dialogue, so don't get me wrong. The weird thing, though, is there's tons and tons of articles coming out about how much they hated it. And I called it from the beginning. Like, the show was just chocked full of plot holes. The biggest one that really irks me at this point, and maybe I'm just dumb and I didn't see it, 
How did Reva know that Luke and Leia were Anakin's kids? She claims she went to get vengeance. So for some reason, Reva goes to Tatooine to to murder Luke. But they never explained why, how. How would anyone know he had kids? That's just a thing that irks me. Now the plot hole is there was a the reason why she knows that there's a thing there is because um, Kumal Nanjiani's character dropped the little uh, the little message device, right? I mean, he was literally put there just to drop the message device. He drops the message device and it plays, and she sees it, and it says something about the twins. Twins! We need some twins! Bail Organa said he was going to Tatooine to protect Luke because Obi-Wan couldn't be there. Yet when Reva gets there, Bal Organa is nowhere to be found. No blaster in sight, no royal guard, no imperial senator, no army, nothing. Not a thing. It's just Owen and Baru there to protect Luke with a couple of blasters and get themselves beat up by Reva. Unbelievable. I, I, I just don't understand. None of it makes any sense. Please tell me character arcs. Like, okay, Obi-Wan went from sucking to being good. What's his character arc? He went to live in a different in a different cave? He moved to a different cave? That's his whole character arc? What was anyone's character arc in this story? Leia got affirmed as the greatest, bestest, most important. They, li they literally spent like a whole minute describing how amazing and important Leia is. Just, you need affirmation sometimes. You need people to tell you how amazing you are. I wish someone would tell me how amazing I was. Please tell me in the comments below how amazing I am, how important I am. I'm really important, I promise. Oh, good lord. So, <laughs> this stuff is just... I mean, for me, it was kind of trash. Like, the whole series was just one plot hole after another and just trash. And me just yelling at the screen the entire time. But again, I respect it. If you liked it, don't you're fine. Don't you know? It it just means you haven't watched the movies as many hundreds of times as the rest of us have. I've even watched the stinking prequels, which I don't even like, like three or four times. Ridiculous. Why would I do that? Why am I wasting my time with this? This entire show, everyone ends up exactly where they started. Darth Vader ends up starts on his throne, ends on his throne. Uh Obi-Wan. Ends in the desert, starts just starts in the desert, ends in the desert. Reva ends up angry, leaves still kind of angry. Like she's free now to do whatever it is she wants. And I just want to point out one last rant. I know I'm ranting. I know I'm sorry, folks. I I, pro I said I wasn't gonna rant, and I am. You gotta be kidding me! Like the let's talk about the lowest stakes. I've ever seen in any fight ever in my entire life. Never have I seen anything like this. You have the, these diametrically opposed fights where you have Obi-Wan fighting Darth Vader and then Reva going after Luke. We know Darth Vader doesn't die. We know Obi-Wan doesn't die. We know that Owen doesn't die. We know that uh, Aunt Beru doesn't die. We know that Luke Skywalker doesn't die. The only person who could have potentially died was Reva, and you and I both know she ain't gonna die, because I'm pretty sure she's getting a spinoff series. <laughs> Where do they go with this? And how many times do they have to tell you there's good? We'd like a we'd like a season two, please. Obi Wan practically begged the fans, like, please give us a, a season number two, sir. I there it, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. He said it twice. Like, oh, you never know. I might be back. You're Obi Wan Kenobi. Ha <sighs> Okay. So, dial it back. Dial it back. Dialing it back. Okay. So, you. <laughs> so, like, even this. This is a decider, right? Uh, kind of like, whatever. I don't care. Uh, Megan O'Keefe. I was enchanted with Obi Wan Kenobi up until the final. I could buy a retcon story everywhere in every, but it broke her when <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi turns uh, and says goodbye, Darth. <laughs> She's just like, oh, that broke the show for me. Goodbye, Darth. Darth Vader isn't a name; it's a title. 
Why would you, his name isn't like Darth. It's not like uh like <laughs> Darth Sidious. His name is not Darth. Like, what are you doing, you idiots who don't know anything about Star Wars? The idiots who wrote this show. Like, and I feel bad. This poor girl really liked the show. And she goes and and then they hit her and they and what they did was they broke her brain because she could no longer accept plausible deni the deniability of the show anymore. She could no longer put aside everything else. It just kept going until it finally broke her when Obi-Wan Kenobi turns around and says, Goodbye, Darth. Her suspension of disbelief has been absolutely demolished by one line. Mine was demolished a long time ago, but I feel bad because this girl genuinely liked the show and then this terrible, terrible writing and directing... I even had to rewatch the scene where they meet each other because the direction was so poor. Just terrible. Just terrible. Goodbye, Dar Darth is not his name. It's a freaking title, you dumb D Darth Maul. So what? Everybody's Darth? Okay. So everybody's Jim Bob. Jim Bob Sidious. Jim Bob Vader. J <laughs> Jim Bob Maul. It's a title. Darth Maul. Darth Sidious, Darth Nihilus. Okay, so let's move on. One more article, I promise. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting. This went longer than I thought it would, but I, I'm, I'm just, I get incensed by these things. <laughs> Here is this is literally Entertainment Weekly, the biggest shill, uh, new, uh, like magazine, whatever that used to be. There is for this type of stuff. Obi-Wan Kenobi review, a, mem a mesmerizing Anakin moment couldn't fix a, a galaxy of plot holes. Darren Franish. Franish? Okay, Darren. And, uh, you know, like, it was nice to see Hayden Christensen. Like, I like, as much as I hate those movies, it's, it's fine. It was good. Like I said, there's some good to go with the bad. And he's like, you know, I just, I just don't get it. I, none of this makes sense. It, it's just they tried to wreck clone a bunch of stuff. It's it's as if they knew they'd seen Star Wars once and they were like, "Hey, isn't there this line where they say something and they look and they're like, now nah, we're just gonna make it. Well, trust me, we can fix this. It's not a big deal. Why even bot like this was just dumb, absolutely dumb. I I, I don't even understand why like. Obi-Wan Kenobi would allow him to live after they fought for a, another time. All of it. There's just like so many plot holes. This guy goes over everyone. I've ranted about most of them. The biggest ones are, are just stupid. Like even in this last episode, Vader has a choice. First of all, people back talking to Vader, uh, that would never happen. I don't understand what happened. And one of the Inquisitors who works for him is like, Lord Vader, we must go after the rebels. We can't go after one lone Jedi. Yeah, you'd be dead, bro. Dead. Right? So then Vader's like, I'm going to take my own ship and go after him. Why didn't you do that in the beginning? You could have just taken your ship and gone after Obi-Wan and taken the other, the Star Destroyer after the other guys. Divide and conquer. Not. It's like as if no one knows anything about like battle. Nothing. They've never read a book. In their entire lives, these people are ridiculous. Uh, people are. All, uh, Liam Neeson gets one line. Thanks, uh, thanks for throwing me that bone, right? Um, so that was like one pretty. And then R Riva gets stabbed twice, twice, and then she has like a little wrap. You know, she just like covered that hole up. She got pierced with a lightsaber twice, twice, and she's cool. She's fine. No big deal. Except Owen sees that she has, like, in the dark, he sees that her stomach's been wrapped and is like, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to hurt you with... Like, come on. This show was written by toddlers. It's just ridiculous. Uh, this guy gives it a C-. Entertainment Weekly. So, again, if you liked it, fine. Not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not busting you for enjoying some relatively good popcorn. You know, you, you didn't have to put your brain on too hard. If you just took it at face value, it's fine. Whatever. 
but as far as like basic writing, it was moronic, just imbecilic. So anyway, I've ranted long enough. Please check out our full length audio podcast. You can, uh, we really appreciate it. Subscribe. You can check it out for free anytime you want. It's uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places for free. Uh, no uh, paid subscription or anything like that. You can uh, like and subscribe here. We'd appreciate those things. Uh, pass it on to your friends. If you think, uh, I've heard many people who told me I'm a complete idiot for my opinion on Kenobi. Do you feel any different after the finale? Were you like that poor girl who had her brain broken because she really liked the series up until the finale when he said, goodbye, Darth? So you tell me in the comments below. I'll be curious. I read them all. So uh, we'll catch you on the next one because I am already on to the next one. Thank you.